Oh, there you are. I'm wondering where you've been. <laughs> hey, welcome back. Thanks for tuning back into us. Us. How you doing? So, there Coming. is somebody that we have not introduced you to yet, a member of our family. <laughs> it's Mildred. Mildred is a 1972 Shasta double axle, but she's been a lot of fun. We had a fun trip to Michigan. James called me up one day. I'm in the middle of working with a client at the shop. James called me up and says, hey, how do you like Michigan? It's fine. Why? You want to go? Okay. Why are we going? <laughs> she said, when are you planning on going? I said, well, how long before you finish with your client? She said, probably another hour. I said, great, we can leave at lunchtime. I said, uh, first run bank, I need X number of dollars and uh, we're on our way. And she said, what? What are we doing? Are we doing? I said, I found a camper online and the guy we had a price looking. or a best offer. And I shot at my best offer. He came back and said, okay. <laughs> so so off we go. off to Michigan we went. And that was quite the adventure to collect her. She did not look like this. No. She looked like this. Ooh. Go man. <laughs> so. She had a window air conditioner hanging out the kitchen window. The kitchen window was missing. And there was a window air conditioner unit for a house stuck out of there. We went through one toll booth and I pulled up and I paid the toll. And as I took off, it was right before I took that air conditioner right outside of the trailer, the big yellow poles that they have to, to protect the toll people. And I'm like, I slammed on the brakes and just about I had we had to back up close. and get it back over again. And it, it, that was a lot of fun. We've oh. added AC, we've added a new fridge, we've new flooring. changed the wheels, yeah. new flooring, new paint job. She used to, as you saw from the photo, she used to uh, have this obnoxious yellow stripe yeah, it was and rough. Um, obnoxious yellow wheels. We got her back and found out the first two feet was rotten and the back four feet was rotten. So the thing really holding it up was the vinyl flooring. <laughs> she needed a whole gut job and yeah. because this is what she used to look like inside. Yeah, so let's go ahead and bring in. Oh, we added the awning. She didn't have an on. Oh, put a new door on too. New door. Because the door was rough and it was it was just so rough that the screw holes were all like wallered out and there was just no way to replace it. Even mm -hmm. We kept it just in case and then we thought, no, no, it's just trash. Yeah. So let's take you inside so you can see what we've done with her in there. Well, what you waiting for? Come on in. All right. So we put in brand new flooring. We put in... Brand new tabletop. Yeah, new tabletop. We kept new the satay the way it was, but we did new cushions, of course. Yes. New blinds. Um, we kept this shelf. There was another um, cabinet like this over on that side, but it just felt really tight when you walked in the door. It was right, right there at your head. So we took it down, and on the bottom of these cabinets, they had little metal braces where you could throw a platform up here, and this would become another bed. But, I mean, look how close you were to the ceiling. That just was not comfortable. Neither so, one of us are climbing up here. This is a two-person bunk up here. This drops down to a two-person. There's two-person. So they say it sleeps six. Well, I don't have any friends I'm that close with where <laughs> I want them that close. No. So we kept all of the original cabinets. We kept all of that. We just painted everything. Um, new countertop. We took out the oven and put in a microwave instead. Which that. works great. We've got the cooktop, the vent. Um, we put in blinds, new blinds, and James built these boxes with trim around the blinds to kind of hard the hide the hardware and make it cute. And let's see, added a few modern things. We, we kept, kept the original. We kept the original light Lights. fixture because I thought that was super cute. There's another one over the sink. Yeah, another over the we sink. We did add some new LED lighting overhead, so it is super bright in here when you want it to be bright. We did. 
But so we put in new ceiling because the old one was not good. We put in a porcelain toilet, a camper toilet, because we mm -hmm. didn't like the plastic one. Nope. And we built the bed. We have our fridge. So she's... Oh, and we put in a, an Ikea vanity, which works great. It's perfect. It has perfect storage for us. It has slow closed drawers on it. It's really nice. Yeah, super nice. We kept all of the original upper cabinetry we added a tv this thing swings around here so you can like that and you can sit at the table and watch a movie too if you want her yeah. now i'm here making my eggs in the morning i'm doing that and watching the tv and she's still lying in bed and, yeah the sink a little strainer basket the seal broke on it so we gotta fix that just a couple little things we're gonna do on it today look at that pull down mm -hmm. no, that's nice you don't get that in 1972 campers no so today's project is to give Mildred a little bit of a facelift. There's some things that need to be done, like little paint touch-ups. Yep. Um, when we put in the new door, we never painted the trim around it, so we need to do that. We made a curtain for the front window so we don't have to go outside and lower the, the panel every time we're going to bed. So I made a curtain for that. We're going to put up a new rod there. Give her a nice bath. So why are we doing all of this? Do we have a camping trip planned? Nope. No, but that is the last time we had Mildred out. We didn't have another two, so we had- It's the 202Z, similar out here. There's the 350Z, right? Well, yeah. this is the 202Z. Yeah. So. so the last time we had Mildred out was at the beach in November of 2022. Look at that Canadian flag out there, representing right now. There you go. Yeah. First project on our list is the curtain rod. So we bought a 10 foot rod from the plumbing section at Lowe's. And we're gonna screw this little half inch fitting on the end of it. So we've got two holes in the side of the trailer that we had previously drilled. And we're just gonna let that kind of button go into that hole so that the rod's not permanently mounted in there. So we'll take a measurement off this. We can cut the other end off to make it fit. And uh, that'd be our first project. <laughs> Except I think the tool for this is at the shop. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Just so you guys know, we've already been to the shop a couple of times. So, it's the downside of doing things at home because everything's always at the shop. Okay, a couple little maintenance things we need to do. Sink, strainer basket. The seal underneath here is let go and needs to be replaced. And the reason it let go is because this little metal ring on the back broke on the one that's in there. So the ring broke, it's not pulling it down with any pressure. Now it can move around. Water leaks into the cabinet, we use it, so we gotta change that. The other thing is in this little access panel here, we open this up. Oh, we wanna make a little safety cable so that can't 
disappear when you got it off, blow away or what have you. It came with one, it's missing though. We've got an outlet in here. I got the power off the camper. This here, outlet, this cable comes in and this is what the um, TV and the DVD player are plugged into. This is the, um, the 120 part of the three-way fridge. The fridge will work off of the 12 volt, it works off of propane, it works off of this. We've got the 12 volt connected here, we've got the propane that comes in down here, and we've got the this voltage here. This outlet, I don't know if it's a little bit burnt up or it's just every once in a while, the fridge is all of a sudden not working. TV, DVD player still working. So I think we just got an outlet in here. It's old. That's an old plastic plate. That plate is 50 something years old. So is this little outlet in here. So is this box that it's in. So it's in a spot that you wouldn't notice um, right off if say it was to get hot and there's supposed, you know, a little bit of smoke coming out of it or something. It's in, a, it's in an area that's not real noticeable. If you're sitting in the camper watching TV or whatever, and you wouldn't notice it. So my thought is I want to get rid of this old outlet in here. But this outlet is just kind of old. It's old plastic. I'm going to get rid of it. I'm going to replace it with a new um, commercial grade outlet. This has got nicer connectors on it. It's a little heavier duty unit. We'll put it in there. Okay, so here we got the problem right here. See this? See the outlet here? It's broken. So it's just dried out over time. The whole face of the outlet is broken. So that is where the fridge was plugged into. It wasn't making great connection. Look at that stuff. Old plastics should always be replaced. It's probably corroded. Yeah, it's just, it's just, you know what? It's been on here a lot of years. It's been sitting outside a lot of years. It hasn't sat outside since we owned it. It's always an indoor storage. But um, that plastic, I mean, there's the center plate of that outlet. It just disintegrated in my hands. It's going down the road 70 miles an hour a lot. And uh, stuff just comes apart, folks. And now you don't think about it because it's not seen. It's out of sight, out of mind. But out of sight, out of mind is where the fires start. So, get in there, change your old plugs. They're cheap. Even a commercial grade one's only... Oh, look at that. I don't know if that was building code in the day, but you can't bring two grounds onto the same screw like that. Um, it's not the right way to do that. They need to be twisted together before they get to the fixture. And then you can put them on one screw. What do we got going on in here? I've got three wires coming into this side of the outlet. No pieces coming apart. You can see the corrosion on them. So you got two wires on, on one screw here. That in itself is a fire hazard. Let me get another better screwdriver for there, I think. That in itself is a fire hazard. Um, it shouldn't be done. Pretty sure it's not allowed in campers. Uh, I know it's not allowed in houses. So let's get to, now we can, with this here, it's commercial grade outlet, so it'll allow up to four wires on each side, on the hot and the neutral. So that'll work for this application, but uh, this outlet they had in here is not, it's not good, it's not good at all. I'm not sure there's nothing wrong with it when they put it in. I'm not saying it was a junk unit, I'm just saying. Um, and you know what? There's nothing to say that this wasn't up to code when it was built. I made a decision not to change that box. The reason is, first of all, it's not coming apart. We double checked to make sure that it's still you know, structurally intact. But uh, my bigger concern is where the wires come in and out at. We can't actually see where they're going because the under construction of the, the fridge brace. So I've got some concern that I won't be able to get enough length to pull them back into the box properly and well then all is lost. So we don't like all is lost. So we're gonna not go that route. I'll leave that box in there now that we've checked it and we're confident that it's in good shape. 
Now these here, the wires go straight in the back of the outlet receptacle. And the screw works like a clamp. It's a clamp man. It didn't exactly leave me a whole lot of wire here. Nice and tight. Not like anything loose when you're working with electrical. Electrical connections should be firm, not loose. Two year old plastic cover with a brand new metal one. All right. When I mean, you live in a camper, you don't put anything up with a level. Because, well, <laughs> sometimes the camper's not level, so. In other words, you're doing it the way I usually do. Yeah, yeah that looks straight. Yeah, it'll work itself out. If somebody says it's not straight, you just crank the corner of the cabin up and... It's straight. This was a Christmas gift from my brother and sister-in-law. And look at, there's a pillow back here too. Bum, bum, bum. Making memories one campsite at a time with the Boyds. Too bad our last name is Smith. These must have been on sale. <laughs> one more thing. Off the list. Handled. Next problem we have is down here, the sink. See how this moves around? Well, it moves around because of that little ring I was telling you about earlier. We made a temporary fix on here, and you, you can tell it's professionally done. You can tell it's professionally done because it's the sound of the duct tape coming off right there. That's what that is. That's yeah, what so yeah. That's what you do when you're in a pinch. Okay, a plumber when you can use duct tape. Huh. I thought that had broken, that's why they came loose. Oh, see? It just slides right up the... Okay, so it must be broke. Something... Something's not right here. The threads on this... Do not... This must have been a... The, these two units don't go together. The threads on here don't match the thread size on here. So I just pulled loose. Now see that thread's on there nice. That's the right size. Happy with that. That ring goes on the bottom side. Sink in between, plumber's putty on top. And then there's a little paper ring there. And a lot of people throw the paper ring out because they think it's packaging material. It's actually, when you put this on here, it allows this ring a friction-free turn. Otherwise, when it hits the rubber, it would stop turning and you wouldn't be able to tighten it down. So that is not packaging, people. Not packaging. All right. I'm not really sure what the proper way is to do this. I just make a snake. I'm rolling around in my hands. Let it stretch out a little bit. I lay it on there and then I kind of pack it in. And I just make sure that I've got a nice heavy bead all the way around. I don't just lay it on there. I kind of really push it into the metal so it feels like it's sticking to it, not just laying there, taking up space. Try to keep it as even as I can so I don't have a heavy spot that keeps the nut from getting any tighter. And meanwhile, there's a loose spot. So there you go. Plumber's Putty by James. Go ahead and comment. It smells good. How many, however many times you want, how wrong I did it, it's okay. My skin is thick and it doesn't bother me a bit. All right, I'll put that down there like that. Put this up here like this. Remember, you got your nut on the bottom, then you got your little washer, and then you got the rubber gasket that seals the bottom side of the drain. Now that goes up there like it should. Okay, now, just nice when you do this to put the drain straight. Angle it nice, folks. Don't just throw it in there willy-nilly. Just do it nice. There is a tool that you put down in here that holds that straight for you. And I have one. It's at the shop. Mm -hmm. Like everything else. Actually, you need to show people my toolbox in the garage. People are gonna start sending me screwdrivers thinking I have no tools at the house. We have a full set of hand tools, wrenches, sockets, screwdrivers, pliers, all that good stuff here at the house. We do. We just don't keep a lot of the power tools here or the specific plumbing tools. I like to let that putty just sit and kind of find its new home. Um, obviously, we're gonna have to cut it off, the excess. But just sitting there underneath a little bit of hand pressure like that, something's more is going to ooze out and it's going to level itself out and it's going to find home. But it does it slowly. So we'll let that sit for about 20 minutes and we're going to come back to it. It'll kind of reshaped and formed the way it wants to be. It'll lay in there the way it wants. 
We would tighten it down with a wrench. We cut off the excess and then the sink is fixed. So that's the sink, decor, electricals. It's washed. Is there anything else we had to get done? The curtain. Oh, the curtain. Curtain rod should be dry. You want to do the curtain rod? Yes. Let's put some curtains up. Happy with the progress of the day? Yes. Now we just need to go camping. So, do any of you have a favorite campground? You can't. Do you have a favorite campground you'd like to go to? Is there some place we need to see? We're happy to drive six, seven hours in any direction uh, from Central North Carolina to find just the right campground. So let us know. In the comments, let us know yeah. what's a great place to camp. Straight. You make a comment. We go. We like it. We'll send you a t-shirt. Yeah. How do you like that? Just a little thank you for hooking us up with a cool campground. Mm -hmm. All right, I like this. All right, so wow. What do you think? Good for today? Good for today. The windows, the door is painted. The we uh, cleaned the mattress. Um, we fixed the sink. We redid the electric for this the um, the fridge. Um, you washed the outside of it. Cheers. Cheers. Kink. Let's go camping. Yes. Let's go camping. Ready to go. And we're waiting. Hurry up and tell us already. Sit in the drive, we're waiting to go. What are you waiting for? No comments yet. Come on. Give me another five minutes. We should post the video first. Yeah. Let's post the video. We'll post the video first. Thanks, guys. I want to go camping so bad. Comment. Give us some ideas. <laughs>